All right, part B is going to ask us to actually decide what the graph of the function will look like. Now, I made it multiple choice because that just kind of makes it easier for you to answer and for me to grade. Um, but what I really would like for you to be doing is either on a piece of graph paper at home or on the actual worksheet somehow, I want you to practice graphing these. And so the way that we graph exponential functions, or at least in my mind, the best way to do it is that you're going to start by making a table. And that table is going to have X and it's going to have Y. And I recommend for these problems, you'll be good if you just start at negative two for X and go to two. You should get enough numbers that it works. Now, some of these numbers won't go on the graph, and that's fine, but it'll be enough numbers to see what the graph's going to look like. So when we do that, we're going to put these numbers in for x in the function. So to find our y value here, we're going to do 2 to the power of negative 2, and that, when we put it in a calculator, it's going to be 1 fourth. Then we're going to do 2 to the power of negative 1, which is one half. And then we're going to do two to the power of zero, which is one, and two to the power of one, which is two, and two to the power of two, which is four. So now when we graph, we're going to graph negative two, one fourth. So we come over here and we go to negative two, and then one fourth is like just barely above the x axis there. Then we're going to do negative one, one half, which is halfway between, and then zero, one, which is our y-intercept. Then we have one, two, over one, up two, if you remember your graphing, and then two, four, over two, up one, two, three, four. So now you can sort of start to get the sense for what this graph is going to look like. And now, exp so now we need to know something about exponential functions. For one, there's a reason we talked about asymptotes up here. That's because all these graphs are going to have an asymptote and this function you can see is going up this way. So that means that its asymptote is going to be the x-axis and as we go up this way it's going to go up faster and faster and faster. But as we go this way it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller but I think we've talked about this before there's no way for exponents to make negative numbers so no number that you put into this function would make it negative so it's going to skim the x-axis here. And when we talk about asymptotes, that's what we're saying, is it's, it's going to come along, get really close to zero here, but it's never going to pass zero, and it's never actually going to get to zero, because again, we know anything to the zero power is one. There's nothing you can put in here that's going to make this zero. Now, if you put a really um, small number, a really negative number, like negative one million, two to the negative one million is going to be really close to zero. It's going to be a very, very small decimal, but it's not going to be zero. It's going to just be a little bit. So um, this isn't a beautiful graph, but this is the general way that your functions are going to look. So you want to choose the one that look, uh, you want to choose the one that looks the best. And I recommend looking at your y-intercept. Does it cross in the right spot? Is it going the right direction? This is growth. So see how it goes up as we read left to right. If it's going down, that's not the right answer. Um, and then you might kind of check one more point, like see it goes through the point one, two. So you want to pick the graph that goes, has the same intercept, maybe goes through one, two or two, four, or check one of those points and then make sure it's going up correctly. So go ahead and do the next part of this problem on Delta Math.